On Saturday, as the processional week was winding down, we hired a tuk-tuk driver to take us a short drive to San Pedro Las Huertas, just south of Antigua city center. It is very much a working class town of around 17,000 people, which we visited to see the public lavanderia. Of course, in Antigua, although there is a small and attractive lavanderia, which is really more of a tourist attraction than a working place, laundry is done by machines, just as we do it. But here, in San Pedro, Residents and professional washerwomen continue in the old ways. As we arrived, to our surprise and delight, a processional broke out. As you can imagine, a small town such as San Pedro, which doesn't have rich families and money to undertake the magnificent floats and figures that we watched in Antigua, but nevertheless, the diocesan church have made the very best that they could. Their dedication and commitment are obvious and impressive. We were impressed. We wanted to wander around the town away from the church in Central Park, but our driver insisted that it would be dangerous for us as we're clearly touristers. I'm doubtful about that because I've seen reviews where visitors enjoy San Pedro without an escort or without problems. But anyway, we decided not to risk wandering around the neighborhoods. Instead, we took a quick ride to the cemetery, but we found no visitors' graves, which proves my skepticism about the danger. I joke, of course.
We visited the municipality of San Antonio Agos Caliente, primarily to visit the weavers' cooperative that you'll see in a few moments. We passed by many Arabica coffee plantations with shade trees, and much to my surprise, the tree used for shade is actually not an endemic species, but one that came from Australia, the Grevillea robusta, often called silky oak, although it's actually not a member of the oak family. The Grevillea is used widely in many countries in South America, Africa, and the Far East for shade and other purposes. Apparently, it doesn't sap too much of the soil nutrients from productive plants, while it provides shade and is a source of sustainable, although low quality timber. That's probably perfect for indigenous farmers because it's not part of the for-profit industry and so is cheap. Okay, the way the Mayan woman they dress, mainly the blouse, with all the designs, all the patterns, all the... The seat of the municipality of San Antonio is the town of San Andres Ceballos, which is well known for its high quality Maya weaving done on a backstrap loom by women. Although surprisingly, a small number of boys are now being inducted locally into the profession. Its name obviously comes with a meaning, as I'll explain. And yes, indeed, it has a long history, going back to beyond 2500 BC in Central and South America. It's cheap and portable and can be set up almost anywhere, comprising seven lateral rods that are inserted transversely across the length of the textile. It can be rolled up at any stage of the weaving and moved to another location where it requires only one fixed anchor plus the weaver herself at the other end because she has a strap or string at her back holding it, hence backstrap loom. When the men, they took advantage to speak to the ladies. Yeah, Because yeah. otherwise, ladies were at home. Uh-huh. Buenos dias. Buenos tardes. Buenos tardes, yes. Esta muchacha, ¿no? Que tuvo el hijo, ¿sí? Sí. Ella fue violada. No, ella se... Ella tuvo una pareja. Sí. Tuvieron al niño, no funcionó. Se separaron. Porque sí, sí vivieron un tiempo juntos, pero muy poco tiempo. No se están casando mucho ahora. Ahora menos. No, now more, more, more people want to divorce them rather than get married. How is it here in English? Uh, weaving. She is their teachers of weaving. Teachers. Nosotros somos maestras porque nosotras tenemos una escuela de tejido para niños. 
Because they have a school for children that they teach to. Ah. Ajá. Nosotros enseñamos el arte de tejer en telar a niños de 10 a 16 años. They, they teach this to children from 10 to 60 years old, the art of... And what kind of thread is this? Is it, uh, ¿Perdón? Sí. What kind of material is ah, Es algodón. It's cotton. That is cotton. Yeah. How beautiful. Sí. How beautiful. Yeah. It's incredible. And the, your mother teach you? Yes. Sí. Mamá te enseñó? Sí, claro. Yes. Esto se transmite de madre a hija, de generación en generación. So, the generation for generations, the mother teach the, the daughter and the daughter, uh -huh. the granddaughter, uh -huh. and etc. Uh -huh. sí. This is uh -huh. so beautiful. It's incredible. El, eh, actualmente, la madre no se está 100% en casa. Entonces ya no existe esa relación madre e hija. Porque la madre está... Está trabajando a, a afuera. actualmente afuera. No bueno, ¿verdad? Nadie puede decir que... Bueno y malo. No, sí, porque todos merecen tener una, una mejor, mejor vida. vida. Ese es el problema. Ese... Mamá, mi mamá nunca trabajó Ajá. cuando se casó y creó a los hijos y solo mi papá trabajó. Ajá. Pero hay menos dinero cuando la mamá no trabaja. Exacto. Entonces ahora ellos quieren tener una mejor eh, condición de, ajá, de vida, pero nuestra cultura ya se está muriendo. Ah. Por eso es que nosotras abrimos la escuela de tejido y tenemos una cantidad de niños que hemos eh, sacado. Hemos sacado cuatro promociones de tejedores. She said very interesting. She said that the Maya culture is dying. The reason is that the woman goes to work because it need to work both. Ah, uh, yeah. But she does stay at home to guide the girl. Mm -hmm. And the girl. So la, la, la hija se queda solita en la casa. Sí, se queda en la casa, cuida, los cuida la, la hermana mayor o la abuela, pero ya no yeah, existe no, esa relación exactly, para aprender. Ajá. Exactly the same is in the United States, where the mother goes out and the children are alone and they they don't receive, you know, all the education and... Ahora sí. Ahora sí. Antes era tradición era de... No. Antes sí. era... Eh, mach, un, el machismo no dejaba que ellos aprendieran a tejer. Before, uh, the machismo didn't allow men to learn, but now men are learning. Oh, they really? Uh -huh. Sí, for the first time in the Maya culture. Pero, it was only women. Sí, ahora sí hemos ten, ni, tenido niños y lo bonito es de que los niños tejen más fino. Yeah, but you can do that later on, actually, if you wish. La faja y el sí. corte. El corte es hecho por hombres, no en ah. esta región. Es traída de Quetzaltenango y este sí. es el corte, es trabajado por en telar de pie, Potlum, en telar de pie. Then I will tell you, baby, it's a, it's a lot. Can I see around? It's just so beautiful. Ishimchi was the capital of the late post-classic Kachikel Maya Kingdom from 1470 until its abandonment in 1524. Its name means Place of the Maize Tree and is indicative of the Maya respect and reverence for maize. It was situated on a modified plateau surrounded by deep ravines in order to be defended quite easily.
Actually, when the Spanish under Pedro de Alvarado arrived at Ishimsky in 1524, the Cachical allied with them against their own enemies, a reoccurring theme, of course, in Central American history of that period. Soon, Ishimsky was declared the first Spanish capital of Guatemala by Alvarado. However, the honeymoon was very short because Alvarado, of course, demanded non-existent gold, so the Cachical fled, whereupon he declared war on them. The Cachical harried and attacked the Spanish over the next several years. Consequently, Ishimchi was the Spanish capital for less than two years, followed by setting up a temporary headquarters at nearby Tegpan, and then moved under constant Cachical attacks to the second capital of what is now called Ciudad Vieja in 1527. Ciudad Vieja, founded in 1527 by Alvarado, had a very short life because it was largely destroyed in 1541 by a catastrophic lahar or mud flow and landslide from Volcán de Agua, which as you can see is very close. Among the casualties of the lahar was the governor, Beatriz de la Cueva, who was named governor only the day before the lahar. She was actually the wife of Governor Pedro de Alvarado, who had died in a freaky horse accident a month or so earlier when he was out on business in the countryside. After the catastrophe here, the Spanish moved their capital to Antigua until it too was destroyed, but this time finally by the Santa Marta earthquakes of 1773, resulting in the creation of Guatemala City as the new capital.